Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to another exciting edition of Channels Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, the price of Bitcoin has been dropping sharply over recent months due to major turbulence in cryptocurrency markets, reaching a major break lower from the range and benchmark crypto had been since early May. Now, this edition of the program, we will try to find out the cause behind the plummeting prices, the possibilities of it bouncing back, and the prospects of indigenous cryptocurrencies as replacement for the global ones. But before we get into all of that, let's first see what made the headlines on social media in the past week. Nigerians went into mourning after the military announced an ambush on some of its personnel in Shiroro, Niger State, which resulted in the death of 30 officers. However, in the same vein, they express anger over alleged non-retaliation from the military as they await justice for the perpetrators of the dastardly act. Well, there was something to cheer about as Israel Adesoya outpointed Jared Kanonia via a unanimous decision to retain his middleweight title in the main event of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. UFC 276, in a clinical, albeit unspectacular, performance, Adesoya's superiority in striking was evident throughout the bout on Saturday at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, USA. Well, you, there you go. Those were some of the trends in the past week. It was, in fact, um, indeed mixed feelings for Nigerians. But uh, as we begin the program, if you want to be part of it from anywhere you're watching, you can do that. So just tweet at us at Channels TV, at Channels Beam, at Vector underscore MBIDI, and you can use the hashtags Channels Beam as well as cryptocurrencies. Well, joining us today to look at uh, this topic we have with us, Bishop Dr. Sam Zuger. He's a pastor, a global preacher, an entrepreneur and philanthropist. He is a general overseer of and founder of House of Joy Ministry and the owner of Sam Zuger Coin Cryptocurrency. He joins us from Abuja Studio. It's a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you very much. Indeed. So, pretty much, uh, what, what's going on? I mean, we've seen prices of cryptocurrency, you know, um, actually hovering in the past few months. What actually is going on in that space? Uh, thank you very much. The first thing is that um, in cryptocurrency, we have two tribes. And uh, the two tribes are the people that believe and the people that disbelieve. The people that have faith and people that have fear. People that want, uh, that, have, that see, uh, have a future in mind and the people that have the now in mind. So these two tribes decide what takes place per time in the cryptocurrency space. The people that have faith, they, what they do is the people that have fear come to the market and when they see that something will happen, which even has not happened yet, then they come with the fear and begin to place others that are lesser than the current market value. So on an exchange, the moment you place a sell order uh, less than the existing order, the person that bought it at that particular level half uh, uh, the price. So when people uh, watch what was happening between Russia and Ukraine, everybody just believed that uh, the whole thing is going to have effect on cryptocurrencies. So the people, the, 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 the tribe of fear now started placing orders. And then the tribe of faith will now buy at that level. So you discover that what happened in cryptocurrency is not magic. It's human beings that drives it. So if the market is dropping, it means that people are selling at a cheaper rate. If the market is rising, it means that people are buying. So it's buy and sell that goes on at every exchange. So if there's the people of fear dominate the market, the market will drop. You discover that at any given time, people are still buying. 
So the people that are afraid are selling, and the people that have faith are buying. So by the time the people of fear step out of the market and the people of faith dominate the market, the price begins to go. So there's nothing so spectacular about the drop in price. It's uh, cryptocurrency operators themselves does that. They have the capacity to mm. grow the market and they have the capacity to drop the market. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like you said, um, you know, those with the faith, you know, with faith actually buy when, you know, uh, people are selling. That. So we hear this term, buy the dip, buy the dip. And, you know, I mean, as much faith as you, as one would have, uh, if, if you're buying the dip and, you know, it keeps going, it keeps dipping rather, uh, you know, how long would your faith, how long would your faith hold you, you know, to, to retain your, 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 your currency or your crypto, you know, you know, in the space? Okay, when you were introducing me, you say I am the founder of uh, Zuga Coin, which is an yeah. indigenous cryptocurrency. So the slogan of Zuga Coin is the future of money and money of the future. So if you want to step into anything, the first thing is for you to know the reason why you are stepping in. So cryptocurrency is an emerging project. It's not yet stabilized. So if you are, top, uh, you are stepping into cryptocurrency, with a futuristic approach, then no matter the deep, you keep, you keep buying. Because no matter what happens, at later time, what you are, what the, the, the deep is coming to rise. So if you have future, future as your, project, uh, your projection, you will not be afraid of any deep. But if you need it now, automatically, you will you'll be afraid. So my own advice to all cryptocurrency operators is this project has come to stay and it's going to save us from the hurdles of financial crisis. So the best thing for any crypto trader or crypto investor is to ensure that you get into crypto not with the get-rich-quick syndrome, but you are getting into crypto because you want to, 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 to establish your financial base. And then, and then set your goals according to uh, how you project your own future. So the deep is just taking advantage of the, the, the tribe of fear. So no matter how deep it is, it is still, there's still serious hope ahead. So uh, it's only two tribes that operate there. So I believe people that want to see the future, they will enjoy cryptocurrency. People that want to get it now, now, they will fail. That one is normal. <laughs> oh, well, so it's good you made mention of indigenous, um, you know, you know, cryptos. And I'm looking at, you know, uh, we are beginning to have indigenous cryptocurrencies here and there. And of course, Luga Coin is one of them. Uh, but what are the prospects, you know, of indigenous um, uh, um, uh, coins, you know, getting that global respect and even value, you know, compared to the ones that we have currently? Yeah, I will talk so much about uh, Zuga Coin because that is what I know. Uh, but I, I know very well that uh, Zuga Coin is not just one of the uh, indigenous cryptocurrencies. It's the first, of, uh, the first cryptocurrency in, the Afri in Africa. So it's not one of them. It's any other one that can be one of them. But Zuga Coin is the first in Africa. And the reason why uh, uh, Zuga Coin is going to to override the rest of the cryptocurrencies is number one. Uh, major uh, uh, cryptocurrencies that we have seen before, all of them are anonymous. Operators are anonymous. So being anonymous shows that the people that started are not sure of where they are going. That is why they are hiding themselves. And uh, me, when I stepped in, the first thing I did was to put my face on the logo of, of Zogacoin. And then if you look at Zuga, Zuga coin, it means that it's my surname that is on the coin. So my name is there. And the name I put there is the name that is on my international passport. Okay, so if I put my name on the, uh, on, on, on the face on it, it shows that I've given myself as a collateral to whoever will want to step into this project. Then the anonymous syndrome that make people afraid we give them confidence so that when they are dealing with Zuga coin, at least they know who to, to contact when things are wrong. 
And in the, in the, in the Zuka coin, we ensure that we have customer care. You are talking to human beings. Unlike other cryptocurrencies, where when you go there, you just open, your, open the app, whatever you see there, you communicate. Uh, though uh, it's human beings anyway, but it's more of chatting. And most times, it's a robot you are dealing with. But in uh, Zuka coin, we have offices. We make sure that if we have a challenge, you can walk into an office, meet somebody there, the person can solve your problem. So, and you can call customer care lines, and they can talk to you. Human beings can direct so, you so, on so, what so to do. On, on, on the basis, on the, Bishop, on the basis of the, that, the anonymity, uh, on the anonymity, I mean, uh, yes. you know, the, it's, the CBN is, you know, has currently has uh, this, you know, um, how would I put it now? Not to say a ban, but you know, CBN has some skepticism around cryptocurrencies, and you know, perhaps that's one of the reasons why the anonymity issue is there. So people are scared, you know, of the clampdown that might come as a result of CBN's hammer. Uh, uh, that one is not is a, 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 a local affair. We an idea, uh, the, 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 the excess of people hiding their faces was when they started from the beginning. You know, cryptocurrency is over 10 years now. So the origin, people that, the, the first players, that, that is what they do. But coming to the CBN aspect, CBN does not uh, ban cryptocurrency. CBN spoke to the people that they have authority over, which are financial institutions. They want them not to do transactions in cryptocurrencies. And then you, if you check very well, uh, cryptocurrency is more of store of value. So it's not CBN directly that have authority over cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's store of value. So it's supposed to be uh, SEC. Other countries of the world, you discover that it's SEC that deals with crypto. It's not CBN. CBN is dealing with fiat currency. Why? This is cryptocurrency. So you only control what you know. For them to ban it, uh, or, so to say, shows that you cannot control what you don't know. So there's nothing about crypto that CBN knows. So they have to caution their key players, financial institutions, not to, trans to do transactions in crypto. But they did place a law, because CBNs doesn't <laughs> make law for Nigeria. So they only talk to people that they have authority over. That is what CBN did. So uh, I, me, I believe that when we have a structure on ground, properly, like in our own system, we have KYC, uh, that is know your customer. We have CDD, that is customer due diligence, where you have office, and then you have the details of everybody that is doing transaction. So I believe uh, the fears that CBN had and other people, we have taken care of in our own system, making sure that you know the people you are dealing with, and then uh, we have ability to track on any transaction that fails. You can, uh, you can cancel your transaction, Unlike other cryptocurrencies, that whatever mistake you do, it has gone and gone forever. So we have introduced a lot of things in our platform that can save uh, tension from key operators of uh, uh, the project. Yeah, so, so one of the things that I'm wondering is, you know, not only Zuga, but I mean every other coin, at what point in time would we see, you know, local coins having the value that, you know, other coins, Ethereum and Co. have? How soon do you think that is going to happen? Uh, the, the value of a cryptocurrency does not have respect on geographical location. Like now, if you call it crypt, uh, a, a local, indigenous, uh, a, a indigenous is uh, a, like me now that came to put my face, and people know me as a Nigerian. But on general note, you can't know that this person that is doing crypto is coming from this particular uh, part of the world. What makes crypto crypto is this, the global standard that has been set already. It's just like if I want to buy a land in, a, let's say, Victoria Island in, uh, in Lagos. And then or let's, let's mention a particular uh, estate. When you go to that estate, there is a standard of sales in that particular estate. So you buy the land according to the value that has been set. And if, I, if you want to build, you have to design it according to the design that has been set already in that particular estate. And then there are people, authorities that, that are going to evaluate all the materials you are going to use. And the, the plan must be approved by the approving authorities. So that is how in cryptocurrency, 
you operate. There's nothing like fake crypto. There's nothing like some standard. They, because before it will be called a crypto, it must have matter. It must have met a, a, some certain criteria on blockchain. You do it on blockchain by API, build it to a certain standard. So when the standard is ready, you move it to uh, some agents, some uh, this thing, platforms, and you don't meet anybody that you can give bribe. You have to send links, and those people can use the links to assess what you have done. If it is approved, if, if it is what is uh, what can go globally, then such exchanges can list you. So the moment an exchange listed a coin, it means that it becomes a global product. So whoever goes there can buy it. So there's nothing like indig indigenous here. We're only trying to encourage people that it's good to key into what belongs to you so that you can encourage that particular platform. But there's nothing like local crypto. There's nothing like indigenous crypto. Cryptocurrency currency is cryptocurrency, and they operate at the same capacity. The only difference is the adoption. The, when, the more people adopt a particular crypto, give, give it a, a, a global uh, uh, presence. But if few people adopted it, that is how it becomes difficult. And uh, for that purpose, cryptocurrencies have platforms to advertise. So if you want your own to go global, there are certain fees you pay. And when you pay those fees, global uh, influencers begin to ad advertise it and everybody take it as a very serious project. So there's nothing like indigenous in crypto. All right, let me, let me just uh, hold you there for a bit. Uh, we'll go on a quick break and of course when we come back, uh, we'll look at another perspective. That's in a moment, please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us um, in the Abuja studio the CEO of Zuga Coin, uh, Bishop Sam Zuga, speaking about cryptocurrencies in the country and also globally as well. So, um, uh, Bishop, let me let me let's look at it from the point of the digital economy. You know, one of the things that this government has you know been trying to push lately, uh, you know, is the digital economy. We can go on and on about how the digital economy has you know contributed to the economy of the country, but you know, how would you say that? you know, the crypto part of all of this, you know, is, is making its contribution? Uh, if, if you look at uh, cryptocurrency, it, it, it has come to save a lot of challenges in the economy. You know, economy is not just about uh, cash. It's about a total well-being and living of humanity. So if a federal government of Nigeria has not uh, looked at a cryptocurrency somehow, I believe by now would have been very, very far because even though there are some challenges that cryptocurrency operators are facing, because it's like many, many people are hiding and then people that are supposed to be part of it are afraid because of uh, some of the challenges that uh, associate with the operator, uh, operation of crypto, uh, cryptocurrency in Nigeria. But I want to tell you that many young people are living fine now because they are operating cryptocurrencies. And to me, the little time that God has helped me to start this project, I know how many people that were living below $1 per day or one dollar generally. But today, they have, their, they have built their houses, some driving their cars, paying their children's school fees, living large. So if government will turn full eye into cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency can contribute 90% of the economy of Nigeria. Like for instance, in Zuga Coin, we have a platform where we are going to give, or we have started giving uh, $2,000 to every Nigerian above uh, 18 years. And that project is going to be launched officially or flag off officially tomorrow. When every person in Africa that is above, two, uh, above 18 years will be given $2,000 uh, worth of Zuga coin to start life with. So if that project happened to go all over Africa, you just discover that Everybody in Africa that will go to, uh, to, for that project will be living above $2,000 because cryptocurrency grows when, people, when many people are coming in. 
So we believe that if Nigeria will look at it as not just something that people can use for money laundering, you know, every, everything has advantages and disadvantages. I, so I, I was believe actually... that if Nigeria can look at the advantages of cryptocurrency, yeah. they will discover that there is so much in crypto to add on digital economy. Yeah, because I was coming to the security. I was, I was, I was, yes. I was coming to the security of it because we know that you know in times past, uh, some some kidnappers even made a request, you know, that they be paid their ransom in cryptocurrency. So that is also one of the, you know, things that I'm sure you know the CBN and the federal government are looking at, you know, as they have the skepticism towards the the, the cryptocurrency. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we go beyond <laughs> issues like this? <laughs> Uh, you see, uh, I'm laughing because cryptocurrency came to be in 2009, uh, January 5th. That is when it was launched for the first time in human history. And it took more than five years for cryptocurrency to be accepted before it came to Nigeria in 2018. That is when the, the, the CEO of Binance came to, to establish his uh, uh, exchange in Nigeria. 2018, 2017 skeptically, but much the uh, full blown of cryptocurrency I was in 2018. So are we saying that uh, before the advent of cryptocurrency, there was no uh, money laundering in Nigeria? Before that, there was no kidnapping in Nigeria. Before that, there was not, no, no social vices. So now it's, it's, it's cryptocurrency that people will use for, for evil. Okay, now, before they, keep, they, they started asking cryptocurrency for ransom, what were they collecting? Was it not Naira? So does it mean Naira also is enhancing cr criminalities in the country? Uh, well, so, well, as, the, as, as this... For, for, uh, this I mean, as they uh, say, you know, for, when, for, when, for, when the, when the normal passes, things are... Sir? Yeah, as I was saying, you know, when the, when, when the normal port is, is almost closed, I mean, you would probably devise another means, you know, to, to, to beat the authorities. Perhaps that's why that happened. So it is not uh, to no, say that, you uh, know, no, it not, is criminalizing... Like yeah. The reason why people will go for cryptocurrency is because any cryptocurrency that have crowd keep growing and people make profit. You know, people, some people are in crypto for trading. So if you are doing uh, crypto, on daily basis, you are making money. So but then fiat currency, when you have it, it remains where it is. So whoever understands how crypto works, we prefer it. So for uh, 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 criminals to be preferring uh, cryptocurrency is to understand that the value of crypto is higher than the value of whatever currency they are receiving. So they prefer the one that will add value to their economy, their own economy in the bush. <laughs> so that is why they are preferring crypto, not because uh, uh, crypto brought uh, uh, criminalities in the society. Crypto, cri uh, crim uh, criminals have been there since the, 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 the dark ages. So it's not cryptocurrency that brought criminality. Again, uh, just before and I let it, you fact, go... Uh, it is it, rather reducing criminality. Uh, well, uh, mm. you know, that is pretty much subjective. But uh, again, just before I let you go, in your own projection, you know, how long do you see indigenous cryptos going, uh, you know, global, having the global adoption and also that value uh, like the other ones from other parts of the world? Uh, particularly Zuka coin, before the end of 2022, you hear that Zuka coin is taken over because some platforms that we put in place, many other cryptocurrencies do, uh, currency doesn't have. Like for instance, uh, uh, right uh, now uh, we have a project to enhance cross-border transactions. So the moment uh, the whole world begin to use Zuka coin to do cross-border transactions, you discover that people traveling to China to buy goods, people going to America to buy goods, you can sit at the comfort of your house and then do a, a scan. In less than 30 uh, seconds, all right. person from the other part of the world okay. collect your money and then release your goods. So we all are right. believing this is, this is a... when the, the, the new platform that we have introduced, when they, when they come to play, cryptocurrency called Zuka coin, which happens to come from Nigeria and Africa, this will is... be leading other cryptocurrencies globally. This is a good point to, to, to end the conversation. Bishop, thank you so very much for joining us today on the show and, uh, of course, sharing your thoughts on this. Thank you very much. Of course, you're welcome.
Well, that's where we are on the crypto issue. And of course, uh, all of that that was said on the program is not the views of Channel Television. It is the view of Bishop Dr. Sam Zuga. But um, of course, moving forward, we'll leave you now on the show. It's a wrap on the show and we'll leave you with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Deputy President of the NLC throwing support for Peter Obi of the Labour Party's candidature in the 2023 presidential election kicks off this week's most viewed videos in fifth place. And, uh, arrangement has been concluded to mobilize in order to ensure victory. Retaining its spot from last week in fourth is the legal practitioner who appeared in court wearing his religious robe. Third spot is the call by the acting governor of Edo State for state policing following the murder of a Catholic priest. Dropping a spot from last week's chart is former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, listing one of his mistakes during the 1999 presidential election. Sometimes one of the mistakes I made was picking a number two. When I was going to become president, but because it is a genuine mistake, God saved me out of it. On topping the charts and gaining one spot from last week is a tanker driver who risked his life to save many by driving a flaming petrol tanker far away from a crowded place.